on your PC, really multitasking, it might be worth forking out a little bit more money uh, for an i5 or an i7. Uh, but if you use your PC to check your emails and just some banking and whatever, listening to podcasts and stuff, then the i3 might be cheaper. So, uh, anyhow, um, another factor, I guess, in deliberation is that more programs are being released with multi-thread capability, and if the programs have multi-thread capability, or games, let's say, I I say programs a lot because I'm a computer guy, and so even when I'm playing my Xbox 360, I'm like, hey, this is a cool program, sorry guys, I mean game. See, and, and I get stuck in that a little bit because they are all programs or applications to me. When I get a disc, I don't say, hey, I got a new game. I got a new piece of software. It's Dirt 3 or whatever. You know, that it's just my language. So bear with me on that if, if I do that. So um, at some computer stores regularly, uh, what will come across the sales counter is that a person doesn't mind paying for a computer that will last. And they want to know which CPU is the best one. And most sales techs will, you know, invariably respond that it depends on what you use your computer for. It'd be the same thing going to buy a car. Which car is going to last longer? Well, I'll tell you what. If you're going to pull a trailer that weighs 10,000 pounds, you probably aren't going to want to get a Ford Ranger. If you want to pull a trailer that that weighs 10,000 pounds, the Ford Ranger is not going to last very long. But if you get yourself a big old beefy one-ton truck with dual, dual axles, you know, and, and this thing's just, you know, has the biggest diesel motor they make and you're driving it on a racetrack with no trailer on it, then you're going to be over revving the diesel engine at about 3000 RPMs and it's not going to last very long. So ultimately you got to get the right tool for the job. Pounding nails with a screwdriver, well, screwdrivers just don't last very long in my experience. So, uh, the scenario that's described above, uh, that I just said right here, uh, sales tech wanting to respond uh, that it depends on what your computer is for. I, I guess that what I'd have to say is you pretty much tell, I tell my clients, I wish this thing would quit coming up. Okay. Uh, what I what I tell my clients when they come to me is that they should save their money and buy something that is sturdy um, and preferably an i3 or an i5, either of those two. And even if the i5 is a little more than you need, it doesn't really matter. And some some people say that you should get an AMD dual core. Personally, I don't like AMD processors because I've had problems with them in the past. And those problems may have been instigated by my own inability to fully understand what they are. So if you're an AMD fan, I, you know, stoop and bow before you. And I do that because I, I can't really argue rock solidly that the AMD is garbage. Okay. To me, I just don't like them. Not because they're garbage. I just don't like them. I I prefer Intel. Okay. So another factor, uh, once again, is that more and more programs being released are multi-thread capable and that they use more than one CPU thread to execute a single command. So things happen more quickly. That's the idea. Uh, photo editors, video editing pro- programs and stuff like that use multi-thread or even hyper-thread abilities, technology, whatever. Uh, the internet browser that used to access a, a bank account or email is not, well, it's it's not unlikely that it won't be multi-thread in the future. Okay, so we kind of understand, hopefully, hopefully, if I'm doing my job correctly, we understand a little bit better what threading is, thread computing, and what the difference is between uh, some of these, the differences between different processors and uh, hyper-threading, threading, whatever, okay? Um, you can go online and read many articles that'll have way better information than my little presentation about this kind of thing. I mean, really, you can if you want. Um Let's see here. I'm going to cover a little bit about the uh, PS4. And uh, again, this is technical specifications. I like to get my information directly from the company. So Sony had released some information, and I'm going to use that in order to discuss what it is, okay? What's the processor? What, What kind of memory are we looking at? And 
what are we dealing with as far as graphics are concerned? Like the video RAM, okay? Uh, the PS4 has a eight-core AMD CPU. Hmm. That's why I don't have a I don't have a PS4. Not that it's not a good processor, but it's AMD, and I'm just not really. Yeah. Anyway, I used to be a big fan, and I was building several computers that were similar configurations, and the ones with the AMD processor, the AMD ran cooler. It ran better for a lot of applications, but when I started forcing it to overclock, it had problems. Now. Maybe maybe they don't need to overclock, and you, in order to compete, maybe Intel, my favorite processor, maybe Intel has to overclock in order to meet AMD halfway. All right, whatever. But the the fact is, is what I wanted to do and the way I wanted to set it up, AMD just never worked for me. Uh, my computer currently has an AMD graphics card, Radeon graphics card, and I like it. It does a great job, but it's noisy. It has a fan on it that the bearings are going out on, and you can get Intel graphics cards that have better throughput processing, that have processors to thread on their own, and they just are made out of a material that gets rid of heat better. So you don't even need fans. So you don't have to worry about that happening. If this one, the fan fails on it, it's going to overheat, and I'm going to need a new graphics card. It's getting close to that probably at this point. Anyway, so the PS4 has an 8-core AMD CPU. 8 gigabytes GDDR5 RAM, okay, and an AMD Pit Cam GPU. That's the gaming processor unit. The Xbox One also has an AMD 8 core CPU combined with an AMD Bonaire GPU, okay, and 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, which is, I think the RAM in the, in the PS4 is probably a little bit better because it's GDDR5 RAM. Anyway, it's, they're, they're just different configurations. They communicate to the motherboard in their channel differently, and that's the only real difference. Um, we can say the difference in RAM or memory is bandwidth, the speed at which data can be transferred. Okay, so once you, if you have 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM versus 8 gigs of G, DDR5 RAM, okay, those two right there are going to be different, and not that they're still 8 gigabytes, it's the same, right? So the difference is going to be bandwidth, or the speed at which data can be transferred. So once I have 8 gigs in there, assuming that it used all of it, right, then how fast can that 8 gigs be thrown around inside that console before it comes up on the screen as data that I can see that's playable, that's executable? right? DDR5 is considered faster than DDR3. The extra RAM speed and more powerful GPU helped the PS4 come out on top over the Xbox One in WCC Tech's uh, benchmark tech. Of course, WCCFT does a bunch of tests that are really, really awesome. If you ever want to go and look at them, it's great. They don't care which one comes out on top. They just, they race them. They take the Ford and they take the Chevy and they race them. Remember the Pony Wars? Same thing. They take the Ford Mustang out in the field. Well, not a field, but, you know, anyway, they take it out and they run it on the same course that they run the uh, the Camaro. And then they switch drivers. So, it, you know, some people actually were trying to say that that car and driver, it was funny. They said that, that both drivers had their preference. And, you know, so when the one driver, uh, the Ford driver was driving the Ford and the Chevy driver was driving the Chevy, that they ran their test as hard as they could, and maybe the Ford driver is just a better driver, not because of Ford, just because he's better. And when they switched places, they both just kind of slacked off and whatever, and they came out with, with this test. Well, that was ridiculous, because if that was the case, then Chevy would have won one race, and Ford would have won the other race. And in most cases, actually, it was the Chevy that won in both cases. But Ford was coming out on top just in that they had better stability in marketing basically that's all it was anyway that's a whole nother can of worms that i better be careful i don't want to get uh, too buried in here but wccft uh wccf techs benchmark tests are very very interesting keep in mind that clean room tests can vary from real world instances so what they come up with doesn't mean it's going to be exactly what what you see in your own environment okay microsoft and sony have tweaked and clocked its units to compete and hopefully last as long as the last console cycle. In other words, maybe the PS4 will last as long as, as the uh, the PS3. One reason I wouldn't 
delve into that market and just go buy another console right now is because remember all the problems that Xbox had when the 360 first came out? It was heat displacement issues. Those problems never happen with computers because it's easy to take them apart, get inside. It's an open box setup. You can get in there and tweak with it yourself, mess with it, put new stuff in, take it out, build your own, but you can't build a console. So the console to me is just if I want to put a game in and just play and not worry about all the settings and all this other complex stuff, then then I, you know, I'm going to play on my console. But if I, and PC gaming is very new to me, so I really can't say a whole lot about it, I guess, at this point. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to say this, uh, that uh, in the, the course of these tests that WCCF uh, did, of, co- of course, they, they found that the AMD Radeon HD 7850 and R7 265PC graphics processors most closely resembled the gra- graphics power of the PS4. So, of course... Uh, Included in one of these GPUs is a hypothetical. Uh, it's a PC. Let's let's make sure the current games on the market will support it. Console owners, of course, are are fortunate that they don't have to review system requirements before purchasing a game, because they know that when it's released for whatever their console is, that it will play in that console. So that's an easy stamp. I have an Xbox 360. My Xbox 360 will run any game that I put in there. Now. This particular article that's on, uh, let's see, what what did that one come from? It would have been, I guess, uh, Cheat Sheet, Tech Sheet, tech sheet te- uh, I can't talk, Tech Cheat Sheet. There's a tongue twister, why is that? Did I have too much coffee? Okay, uh, anyway, this this particular website is talking about uh, console owners are fortunate that they don't have to review system requirements. And that's where I get my source from there. Um, ultimately, I think that you do kind of have to concern yourself with it because I had an Xbox 360 that was 4 gig. And I went to Amazon and bought a hard drive for it. There was many games I could not play on my Xbox because I didn't have the right system requirements. So that statement there, in my opinion, is not really true that console owners are fortunate they don't have to review system requirements but in a way it is true which is why i said it my interest is only in exposing every aspect of the technology and then you can make an informed decision as you probably already have as to which one you would prefer to use right so between the xbox 360 and the uh, computer that i have sitting here I kind of struggled with the fact that I don't really want my computer to be my game console. You know, just like I don't want my iPhone to be my MP3 player. I don't really, I don't know. Um, it, it's a video camera. It's a regular camera. It's an MP3 player. It's a recorder. I could actually be doing this program right here on my phone with the Spreaker app or whatever, right? And there's an app for everything. So my phone can also be a radar detector in my car. It can be a GPS navigator. It can be all of these things, but do I want it to be? Not really. Me personally, I don't, okay? So I'm running out of time here, and I I guess in closing what I really want to say is that now we have a, a fundamental understanding, hopefully, of all of these different, you know, types of of uh, devices, right? The uh, eight core Intel i7, 3.5 gigahertz processing speed, uh, as opposed to the Intel i7 3770, um, overclocking at four gigahertz. AMD FX uh, 80, 8350, I guess, would be a four gigahertz processing speed. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we understand that there's all these different te- technical. Uh, aspects that are virtually the same between the two machines. In fact, we know that AMD processors are found in our PCs, and they're also found in um, Xboxes and Playstations. So, what does that mean, exactly? Well, to me, what it means is that the console and the PC are very closely related. They're of the same species. They're computer processors that handle threads. And we also know that the Xbox 360... um, which I'll I'll just go over just really quick. Okay, technical specifications. Um, there's different hard drive sizes, as there are with with any machine, I guess. 
360 uses triple-core IBM-designed Xenon as its CPU.